we carry on this conversation because it's an important conversation of the reactions you see when you see a white background. This is not new information. They've been doing this for a long time, even before I discovered it. They have a CIA operative. Why do you think they put a crazy person in a white room? That's a CIA operative move. Why do they put a person in a crazy house in a white outfit? Now take yourself as the viewer of watching a weird skin Persian always wearing white because it washes out any emotion that you have and then she can stand there with a smile and that's all you see. That's painstaking if you actually are up to real shit in life. However, most of you as audience have now been trained to be happy and joy. Do you understand that that is the woke culture? The 12 and a half emotional ingredients is the teachings of woke culture. That is the book that has told you what the woke culture is because Gary V is part of the woke culture because he has the most real followers and now he's with a Persian. Yet you as audience continuously go onto his platform and tell him how wonderful he is. Acting like absolute buffoons who really have no interest in business. You too just want fucking attention. While you offer no services of any form of a business. While you have no education. You have no passion. Although you think passion is watching Monavan or Taylor Swift spread their legs on a stage. While they sit there and they talk as if they're so kind and so sweet. But underneath they're sweating bullets. Literally the most ignorant shit I've ever seen in my life. Of no, It's not even about the level of intelligence. It's the willingness to have real education versus trying to look at some hot girl who's not even really hot. But she created the idea in your head that she's hot because she stands there with her legs crossed and her pale white elephantitis legs sitting in your face telling you that she's rich and that brings value into your home. You have a child. To the point where these parents sell their kids out to try to jump off a career off a two-year-old. Well, nobody says anything and the people that are fighting for the children get community guidelines. Because that's the shoo-choo method. So what we know about Singapore is they're very in a controlled environment because they don't want to be caned. But sometimes people get caned when they're not supposed to be caned. So they have to act very, very specific. And that's the, the lessons of what we're dealing with when it comes to producing content within the organized crime mafia of TikTok. While Kamala Harris says that that is democracy. So it's democracy for the top one zero one percent. So it's democracy for them because Mona Van can do and say and act any which way she wants, even if it's sub sub gingivally, sub consciously. It's like an implication of her seductively sitting on a jet with Gary Vaynerchuk, where she purposely looks at the camera. While there's no words except for kindness, but the bad intentions is that she assaults the audience. Do you get what I'm throwing down? Remember the reform party where she lifts her eyebrow? That is a horror show of bad intentions. Literally a plane riding into a building. Yet there's no evidence according to what your perspective. That's the modern day weaponry of using the influencer platform so that women who are not American 
Whether you're Priyanka Chopra, whether you're Mona Van, whether you're the Armenians out of LA, whether you're Heather Lamusa, whether you're Alex Earl or Alex Cooper, all vicious women behavior that has been going on for centuries and now you've put it on film. And every fucking time you men fall for their soft voice who can definitely control it because they want your money. They want the status. They want to be on that red carpet with you, Adam Levine. While you just sit there and you let it happen to all of us and then you go buy them another outfit or you take another photo with them and then no one stands up for anything except for me and Donald Trump. While you are only focused on skin color and you act as if Haitians are black Americans, I'm sorry, but Haitians are dangerous. We should actually take a a gander at the Haitian living how, does it, how do the Haitians live? They believe in voodoo. They are disruptive. They have no education. They have no law and order within their own country. And you're going to tell us that 20,000 are allowed to live in Springfield, Ohio, so that you can overthrow Ohio with what you want to call votes? You tell me in logics how a government system who is American would protect their citizens by telling the citizens to trust foreigners such as Haitians and literally forcing it upon Americans to accept them into society when they cook cats and dogs and obviously are offing geese and swans in lakes. And there's video of it. One cat dead is too many when it comes to actual cats and sacrifice. There should never be a dog that was eaten. And just to let you know, in Georgia, when you eat coon, you make sure the feet are on. Because sometimes these sickos will take a stray dog and off the dog and then cut the feet off and then try to make it look as if the dog is a raccoon because they'll skin the dog. True story here in Georgia, by the way. So you don't tell me that Haitians don't eat cats and dogs because to them, they have no sense of education or class and they, they see animal, they see food. That's nasty to an American but not to a Haitian when they barely have food to put on their plate. But that's not our fucking problem. What they're exposing for their countries is we're not giving them any more fucking money. And that is don't travel to Haiti and go on vacation. That's what the message is. The message is don't go on vacation to Venezuela So now your tourism in your countries have subsided and now you're going bankrupt. So while you don't assist the United States of America, the Americans will not assist you. See, that's the take-take of foreign governments with the help of Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is a terrible leader. She's a horrible person. She's not American. She clearly is the Antichrist. She's annoying as shit. She cannot handle herself in any form of interview. Yet you sit there and you talk about feelings. You sit there and you talk about feelings. And that's not politics. The reason why everyone is in such duress. One is because Mona Van's in our fucking face. And two, because Kamala Harris is the most erratic, annoying, mental ill patient that we've seen in a long time when it comes to government. Oh, wait. The last one we saw was Obama and Biden. And I remind you that Kamala Harris is in charge right now. And the reason why you are so angry ain't because of Donald Trump. It's because of fake news media and the narrative that continually browbeats you on a regular basis. All of which are lies. David Muir.